everybody. Hi everybody, Charlie here, and today we're reading, finishing, Nancy Drew and the Clue Crew, number two, Scream for Ice Cream, Ice Cream Meltdown, by Carolyn King, illustrated by Mackie Pamatuan. Last chapter, chapter eight, Ice Cream. Let's get started. Let's follow Kevin on our bikes, Nancy suggested, and see what he's up to. We lose our awesome fruit smoothies, George asked. Uh, nah, uh. The girls sat on the bench, slurping their drinks. Maybe there's a way to find out if Kevin entered the ice cream contest, Nancy said. The Jim and Barry ice cream factory is on the street, George said. Do you think the guys would let us see the sign-up list? We can ask him, Nancy said. The girls finished their smoothies. Then they rode their bikes all the way down the street to the Jim and Barry ice cream factory. After filling... Filing through the revolving doors and looking around, the lobby was covered with pictures of Jim and Barry. The guard was sitting at a big wooden desk. Her nameplate read Beverly Shaw. Shaw. Beverly Shaw. We're not giving away ice cream, kids. We don't want any ice cream, she said. We just wanted to see the sign-up list for the contest, please, George said. Sorry, girls, Beverly said. That list is private. Then can we meet Jim and Barry? Bess asked. Jim and Barry are hard at work, Beverly said, shaking her head. They're coming up with the next flavor. What is it? Nancy asked. That's private too, Beverly said. Her phone rang. She picked it up and said, Jim and Barry's ice cream. The girls traded glances as Beverly began talking. There had to be a way to get inside the factory and speak to Jim and Barry. Hold on, Sarah, check the calendar. Beverly said into the phone. She opened her dress desk drawer and began rummaging through it. Come on, George hissed. In a blank, the girls were tiptoeing quickly and quietly down the hallway. At the end of the hall was a big steel door. A sign on it read, employees only. What are employees? Nancy asked. Maybe kids who signed up for the ice cream contest, George said with a smile. Are we lucky or what? Employees are people who work at that place. So employees at the Gem of Air Ice Cream Factory would be the people who make the ice cream or decide the flavors. Are we lucky or what? The girls pushed out the door until it swung open. Brrr, Bess said as they walked into the room. It's freezing in here. The room was brightly lit and sparkling clean. It was filled with big steel vats. The vats were almost as big as, as tall as the girls. No wonder it's cold, Nancy said, rubbing her arms. This must be where they make the ice cream. George ran into a vat. George ran over to a vat. She grabbed the rim and hoisted herself up. Then she peered into the vat. Wowie, I think this is my this is my favorite. Whoa! Nancy gasped. George was falling headfirst into the vat. She and Bess grabbed George's feet and held on tight. I like ice cream, but not this much, George shouted. Help! We're trying, Nancy grunted. She and Bess tugged on George's feet until they finally pulled her out of the vat. Woo! George said. That was close. No, a voice said. That was mint, mint, hooray. The girls whirled around. Jim and Barry were standing in the room. Nancy stared at the guys. They wore white coats and hairnets over their hair. We're not giving tours yet, kids, Jim said. The door said, employees. That means people who work here. Barry explained with a grin. You're a bit young for a factory job. You, and you shouldn't be here without a grown-up, Jim added. Sorry, Nancy said. We just want to see the sign-up list for the ice cream contest tomorrow. We're already on, lo on the list, George said. But we wanted to see if someone from school was on it, too. Can we? Bess asked. Please? No can do, Jim said. We can't wait to taste your ice cream tomorrow, Barry said. But we can't wait to taste your ice cream tomorrow, Barry said brightly. Just try not to fall into it. Almost done with chapter, with chapter eight. Oh, I missed, I'm mistaken. This is not the last chapter of the by the way. The guys held the door for Nancy, Bess. The guys held the door for Nancy, Bess, and George as they left the big cold room. How neat was that, Bess squealed. We got to meet Jim and Barry, up close and personal. But we didn't get to see the list, Nancy sighed. And when the guard sees that we sneaked in, she's going to have kittens. As, as they neared the guard's desk, 
Nancy noticed something. There was a different guard at the desk this time. His name played read Matt Stevenson. Brainstorm, George whispered. Nancy and Bess Nancy and Bess followed George to the desk. Hi, George said. We just wanted to make sure our names are spelled right on the contest list. Matt reached into the top drawer of his desk and pulled out the sign-up sheet. Here you go. The girls huddled over the list. Bess jabbed her finger at one of the names. Kevin Garcia. Do you spell your names right? Matt asked. Yes, the girls said together. Then good luck in the contest tomorrow. Matt said, and if you win, save a pint of ice cream for me. Nancy, Bess, and George slipped through the revolving doors. Once inside, they raced toward their bikes. Kevin did enter the contest, George said. We have to check Kevin out, Nancy said. But I have no idea where he lives. Me neither, said George with a shrug. 200 Crescent Street, Bess said. It was right next to his name. How did you know? Nancy asked. Not only can I build and fix things, Beth said proudly, but I have a great memory too. The girls pedaled the three blocks to Crescent Street. They found Kevin's house in the middle of the block. They stepped up to the door and Nancy rang the doorbell over and over again. They walked up to a window and peeked inside. And peeked inside. The Garcia's housekeeper was busy vacuuming the living room. Rrr, rrr. No wonder she can't hear the doorbell. George said, that vacuum cleaner sounds like a rocket booster. The vacuum cleaner sounds like a rocket booster. Nancy saw a path leading around the house to the backyard. Let's check out the back, she said. Kevin might be hanging out there or making ice cream, Beth said with a frown. The girls followed the path back to the backyard. They didn't see Kevin, just some patio furniture and a small white tool shed. Suddenly, Nancy spotted something on the grass near the shed. It looks like a cr crumpled up candy bar wrapper. She picked it up and flattened it out. It was a wrapper from the chocolate soldier shop. That's where Kevin bought the, sh bought the chocolate, Nancy said. Maybe Kevin made the ice cream already. And he's stashing it in a freezer inside the shed. Inside the shed. Shed. She turned the handle on the shed door. The wind door creaked as she pushed it open. The girls fled inside the shed. They jumped as the door slammed shut. With only one tiny window, it was very dark in the shed. Let's go. I don't see any. Ooh. A voice moaned. Nancy froze. Oh. There it was again. Nancy felt Bess grab her arm. Ooh, what was that? Bess stammered. A ghost. And that's the shed. Over there. And then. That's the end of chapter 8. Chapter 9 is called What's for Dessert? Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, subscribe, and click that bell. Keep reading and keep dreaming. See you guys next time.